Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to the library. I'm Miss Davis. We're all thinking about summer vacation this time of year. We're all excited about have some days off and get to do things and go places that we usually don't get to go. And so this week, we're going to be listening to books about summer vacation and different things that go along with summer vacation. We're going to be reading The Sandcastle That Lola Built by Megan Maynor, Goldfish on Vacation by Sally Lloyd-Jones, How I Spent My Summer Vacation by Mark Teague, and The Little Red Fort by Brenda Mayer. All wonderful books. I hope you enjoy the read-alouds, and I hope you have a wonderful week as we count down to summer vacation. Bye. It's Shadow Story Time. This book is about nature. The Sandcastle That Lola Built by Megan Miner. This is the sandcastle that Lola built. This is the tall, tall tower of the sandcastle that Lola built. This is the sea glass that signals mermaids from the tall, tall tower of the sandcastle that Lola built. This is the foot. Hey, you stepped on my sand castle. Oh, said the dude with the frisbee. Oops. Can you use this bucket to fix it? Said Lola. Okay. What should we add next? Asked Lola. We? This is the wall that protects the sand castle that holds the sea glass that signals the mermaid from the tall, tall tower of the sand castle that Lola and Frisbee Dude built. This is the bulldozer. Stop, said Lola. You can't dig there. Dig said the little guy. You can dig here instead and help us with our sand castle. Dig, asked the little guy. More? Yes, said Lola. More. This is the bulldozer that dug the moat that surrounds the wall that protects the castle that holds the sea glass that signals mermaids from the tall, tall tower of the sand castle that Lola and Frisbee Dude and Little Guy built. These are the shells. Oh no, said Lola. Splash. Hey, you can have some of mine, said the girl. You found all these? asked Lola. I'm bringing them home to Minnesota so I can remember the ocean. Do you want to add some shells to our sand castle? You bet! These are the shells that led to the moat that surrounds the wall that protects the castle that holds the sea glass that signals the mermaid from the tall, tall tower of the sand castle that Lola and Frisbee Dude and Little Guy and Minnesota Girl built. Crash! Oh no, said Frisbee Dude. Uh oh, said Little Guy. That's not good, said Mo Minnesota Girl. Lola sniffed. The mermaids didn't even get to move in yet. She picked up her pails.
Are we making another sand castle? Asked Frisbee Dude. For mermaids? Asked Minnesota Girl. Again? Said the little guy. We? Asked Lola. I'll build the wall. Dig, dig. I'll find more shells. I could build a tall, tall castle? Said Lola. Hooray! How I Spent My Summer Vacation Written and Illustrated by Mark Teague How I Spent My Summer Vacation by Wallace Bleff. When summer began, I headed out west. My parents had told me I needed a rest. Your imagination, they said, is getting too wild. It will do you some good to relax for a while. So they put me aboard a westbound train to visit Aunt Fern in her house on the plains. But I was captured by cowboys, a wild looking crowd. Their manners were rough and their voices were loud. I'm trying to get to my aunt's house, I said, but they carried me off to their cow camp instead. The cattle boss growled as he told me to sit. We need a new cowboy. Our old cowboy quit. We sure could use your help. So what do you say? I thought for a minute, then I told him, okay. Then I wrote to Aunt Fern so she'd know where I'd gone. I said not to worry, I wouldn't be long. Dear Aunt, captured by cowboys. Don't worry. See you soon. Love, Wallace. That night I was given a new set of clothes. Soon I look like a wrangler from my head to my toes. But there's more to a cowboy than boots and a hat. I found out the next day and the day after that. Each day I discovered some new cowboy tricks from roping and riding to making fire with sticks. Slowly, the word spread all over the land. That Wrangler Kid Bluff is a first-rate cow hand. The day finally came when the roundup was through. Aunt Fern called. Come on over. Bring your cowboys with you. She was cooking a barbecue that very same day, so we cleaned up a little and we headed her way. The food was delicious. There was plenty to eat and the band that was playing just couldn't be beat. But suddenly I noticed a terrible sight. The cattle were stirring and stamping with fright. It's a scene I'll remember till my very last day. They're gonna stampede, I heard someone say. Just then, they came charging. They charged right at me. I looked for a hiding place, a rock or a tree. What I found was a tablecloth spread out on the ground. So I turned like a matador and spun it around. It was a new kind of cowboy, a fantastic display. The cattle were frightened and stampeded away. Then the cowboys all cheered, Bluff's a true buckaroo. They shook my hand and slapped my back and Aunt Fern hugged me too. And that's how I spent my summer vacation. 
I can hardly wait for show and tell. The Little Red Fort by Brenda Mayer, pictures by Sonia Sanchez. The Little Red Fort. Ruby's mind was always full of ideas. One day she found some old boards. Who wants to help me build something? She asked her brothers. Oscar Lee pretended not to hear her. Rodrigo gave her a look that could melt popsicles. Jose almost fell off the fence. You don't know how to build anything, they said. Ruby shrugged. Then I'll learn. And she did. Who wants to help me draw plans, Ruby asked. The boys clutched their sides and howled with laughter. <laughs> Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll draw them myself. And she did. Satisfied with her plans, Ruby asked, Who wants to help me gather the supplies? Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll gather them myself. And she did. When all the supplies were gathered, Ruby asked, Who wants to help me cut the boards? Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll cut them myself. And she did. When all the boards were neatly cut, Ruby sang, Who wants to help me hammer in the nails? Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll hammer them myself. And she did. Soon Ruby's creation was complete. Who wants to play in my fort, she called. Me, me, said Oscar Lee. Let's go, said Rodrigo. I'll play, said Jose. I'm not busy anymore. Not so fast, Ruby said. You didn't help me draw the plans or gather the supplies or cut the boards or hammer the nails. You said I didn't know how to build and you laughed at me. I'm going to play in the fort by myself. And she did. We don't want to play anyway, the boy said, but they did. So they huddled, whispered, and got straight to work. Oscar Lee made a mailbox. Rodrigo planted flowers. Jose painted the fort, fire engine red. Ruby was delighted. That evening, the boys followed a delicious aroma to a fort warming party. 
Who wants to help me clean this plate? Ruby asked. We do, the boys said. And they did. Hello, friends, and welcome to Storytime. Today, we're going to be reading the book, Goldfish on Vacation. This book is written by Sally Lloyd-Jones and is illustrated by Leo Espinoza. So this is the front cover. This is the back cover. And this is the spine. And the spine says, Goldfish on Vacation. OK, friends, let's get started. Goldfish on Vacation. Sometimes it's hard being a goldfish. You dream of growing fat and exploring coral reefs, but instead here you are in a bowl, going round and round in circles. And sometimes it's hard being a child in the summer in the city. All your friends leave and there's no one to play with. You dream of escaping the steamy heat too, but instead here you are in an apartment going round and round in circles. But sometimes, well, something happens to change all of that. This is the title page, Goldfish on Vacation. In a small apartment in a tall round building by a park next to a river in the middle of a big city, there live three children. H, little O, and baby M. In a small bowl next to a lamp in the middle of a table beside the curtains in a small apartment, there live three goldfish, Barracuda, Patch, and Fis. An old fountain stood at the end of their street. It was broken and covered in ivy. No one used it anymore, except to throw garbage in. But the children thought it was beautiful. On top of the fountain, there perched, as if he just landed or was just about to fly off, a magnificent stone eagle with outstretched wings. Grandpa said the same people who built the famous Grand Central Station built the fountain. And in the olden days before cars, horses drank from it. But when people got cars, they didn't need horses or the fountain, and they stopped taking care of it. The children felt sad for the fountain and the eagle. Then one early summer day, a sign appeared. Coming in two weeks, calling all goldfish looking for a summer home. A summer home for goldfish? I've never heard of such a thing. The children rushed home to tell their fish, you're going on vacation. Barracuda stared with his big fish eyes. Fist blew big fist bubbles and Patch sank slowly down to the bottom of the bowl. See, H said, they can't wait. Grandpa rushed into the kitchen and on the big calendar on the wall, next to June 28th, he wrote, Goldfish on Vacation. But the children didn't need a calendar to remember. They were already counting the days. Every morning they rushed to the window and so did Grandpa. And every morning they watched a man at the fountain. There's a man right there. What's he doing? Hmm. One morning, he was cleaning. And the next morning, he was scrubbing and scraping. And another, he pulled ivy off the eagle and filled the fountain with clear, cold water. And he put in tall reeds and lily pads. And then one morning, the children couldn't see him. They couldn't see him because... <gasps> because of all the children. The children and children and children 
crowding around him, all of them waiting to drop off their little fish children. Oh my goodness, look at all the kids. Wow, there's so many kids holding their goldfish. They're all really excited to have their goldfish go on vacation. It's today, cheered H and little O and baby M. And it was. In no time, they were making their way slowly down the big staircase and out the front door. Grandpa leading the way, then little O with her net, then baby M with the fish food, and then H with the bull and barracuda and patch and fist in a wonderful goldfish parade. Out on the street, everywhere they looked, there were goldfish parents just like them with their goldfish. Look, she sees another kid. Look, baby's talking to another kid. There's a kid on a skateboard with their fish. There's two friends. There's some parents bringing their kids. Looks like grandpa's meeting a family over there, huh? When at last it was their turn at the fountain, H and baby M and little O told their fish goodbye and see you soon and don't be homesick. Then the man helped them lower the bowl underwater. At first, the fish hung back in the bowl until in a flash of light, they darted and they were gone. They went out to make friends with other goldfish. <gasps> the water shone in the shadow of the eagle's wings and the children saw glistening in the sunlight, swimming in the clear, cool pool, like sudden glimpses of hidden treasure, fish after golden fish. There's so many of them. All these goldfish were always in their own little bowls and now they're making friends. All through the summer, H and little O and baby M stopped by to say hello to their goldfish. And so did the other goldfish parents. Soon all the children looked forward to meeting each other at the fountain. Every day they played together and every day grandpa came and put his chair down and chatted with the children who sat and listened. And he told stories of those hot August days long ago when he was a boy and how all the children who couldn't leave the city would jump and splash in the fountain. Here's back in the day, you can tell because it's kind of in black and white. And then the children wished that they were those children jumping in. Before they knew it, it was the end of summer. The man told the goldfish parents that the only way to catch their fish was to go into the fountain, to wade into the water with their nets. And so all the children took off their sandals and jumped and splashed and laughed in the fountain. And then grandpa, took off his sandals too. And he rolled up his trousers and he paddled. And he said it was like those days long ago when he was a boy. And the children could hardly even recognize their goldfish. They looked like completely different fish. Are they really our fish? Asked little O as they headed home. Oh, yes, I'm absolutely certain there are fish, said Grandpa, who really wasn't at all certain they were. They look so fat and happy, said H. Of course, said Grandpa. That's what a vacation will do for you. Anyway, who says you have to leave the city to have a vacation? And the children laughed because they knew it was true. And so the goldfish who may have been Barracuda and Patch and Fist or some other goldfish altogether, went back to being fish in a bowl. And the children went back to being children in school until the next summer when Hamilton Fountain would once again be filled with lily pads and reeds and shining water and golden fish. And children. And wow, this is next year when they're all going to bring their fish again. 
back to the Hamilton Fountain. The end. And here, look, the man who cleaned the fountain says, the end. So this book was called Goldfish on Vacation. Thanks so much for coming to Storytime, friends, and I'll see you next time.